So in this unit, we're going to talk about weak acids and bases. We've talked previously about strong acids and bases, where they dissociate completely. They dissociate less than 5%, or less than 5%. The equilibrium constant for weak acid equilibrium is called the acid ionization constant, or Ka. And for the weak base, we call it the Ka. And this just the degree to which the acid base ionizes. So we set our expression the same way we would any other expression. So we have our weak acid as a reactant, and then it breaks down or ionizes into a hydrogen ion and a conjugate base. We could also call it the hydronium ion if we include as reactants, but you don't have to. In some cases, especially when we talk the water so that we have the hydrogen to donate. Um, we do our Ka expression as our product's concentration over our reactant concentration, just like any other K. Um, then in the weak base equilibrium, you see we'll have our water involved so that our hydrogen can be in this case, our acid acts as the base. Uh, sorry, our acid is the water, donating hydrogen to the base, and we make our conjugate acid and hydroxide. And again, the Kb expression then will be our conjugate acid times our hydroxide ion concentration over the concentration of our weak base. And again, we don't include water because water is a pure liquid. All right. So to calculate the percent ionization of a weak acid, we take the percent of our hydronium or hydrogen ion concentration and divide that by the weak acid original concentration times 100. And again, you'll see that that is first of time less than 5%. For a weak base, we're going to do the same thing, only instead of the hydronium ion, we use the hydroxide ion, and then we have the original concentration of the weak base. And then all right, so let's look at a problem. <clears throat> so, sorry, get here to the top of the page. All right. So, for example, one, we want to calculate the pH and the percent ionization. So, again, we're going to start with our concentration of our weak acid. We're going to write our weak acid dissociation. So that we can set up our ice chart. So this acid will dissociate into a hydrogen ion and the acetate ion. And then <clears throat> we will start with our initial concentration of our acid, which is 0.25 molar. And initially we don't dissociate it at all. And then our reaction shifts to the right. And so we'll have 0.25 minus x, and then x and x at equilibrium. We're given our equilibrium constant. Again, our equilibrium expression, our Ka, is going to be the concentration of our hydrogen times our acetate ion over the concentration of our weak acid. So we plug in what we know into the expression. So we have 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 is the Ka, and we plug in our equilibrium values of x and x over 0.25 minus x, and then we solve for x. Again, you can use your problem solver to do that. You will also see if you look in your textbook that they will talk about how you can um, estimate by ignoring this x, and as long as the ionization is less than 5%. That's fine to do. I say since we already know how to use our solvers, we can just use our solvers. So we go to our, our solver and our calculators. But if you find yourself without a calculator to do that with, you can do the approximation. So we plug in to solve for x. All right, so we go into our solver. I have to set mine equal to zero since I have the old-fashioned calculator. Those of you with the new calculators just set up the 
um, E1 and E2. zero and then alpha solve and then we find that x is 2.11 i naught times 10 to the minus 3 and again these answers here were done by approximation so you can see that it doesn't make that much of a difference all right so now that we know that our x concentration is 2.11 times 10 to the minus 3 what does that mean well remember we want to find the ph and to find the pH, if you recall, is the negative log of the hydrogen concentration, right? And so since X is the hydrogen concentration, to find the pH, we take the negative log of 2.11 times 10 to the minus 3. And so we plug that into our calculator. And we get 2.11. Six, seven, six. And remember your significant figures for your concentration tell you how many places past the decimal in your pH. Okay. And then that's how we do our so that's the answer. And then B was what is the percent ionization? And again, that's the concentration of your hydrogen, which again is 2.11 times 10 to the minus 3. And then divided by concentration of the acid, which was 0.25, and then times 100. So I'm going to plug that into our calculator. <coughs> and then we get 0.844%. So this is off by a place. So at this point, I want you to pause, and I want you to try the practice problem. This, of course, though, is a KB, but it would work in the same, similar fashion. Alright, so let's go over the practice problem together. <coughs> Again, we have our weak base. Okay, we have to include our water for when we do our bases. So we get CH3 and H3, the plus, and then our hydroxide. Again, because the water donates the hydrogen. All right, so then we set up our ice chart. <coughs> our initial concentration of base was 0.6. Our water, of course, doesn't matter because it's a pure liquid. We shift to the right, and so then we get 0.6 minus x, x and x. Our KB expression is 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4. Sorry, that's our KB value. Our KB expression would be CH3 and H3 plus times concentration of OH over our weak base. We plug in what we know, our KB, 4.4 times 10 to the minus 4 equals X times X over 0.6 minus X. Again, we solve for X, plug it into our solver. So we have X squared, 5.6 minus X, and then our K value. Four times ten to the minus four. Again, we set x equal to zero in the solver. Alpha solve, and then we get point zero one six zero molar as a concentration of our. This time, remember x is hydroxide. Right, x is our hydroxide. And since we want our pH to find our pH, we would first find our pOH. Take the negative log of point zero. One six zero, <clears throat> and we find that our pH is one 
point eight zero zero and so then sorry our pOH and then our pH would be fourteen minus that so fourteen minus that gives us twelve point two zero zero so that is our pH and then we want our percent ionization and again our percent ionization is our concentration of our hydroxide ion which was point zero one six zero over the original concentration of our base which is point six and that's times one hundred <coughs> and, and so we get two point six seven percent and that is how we find the pH and pOH percent ionization for weak acids and weak bases. <clears throat> All right. So if we look at another type of problem in this instance, we are told that the pH is 9.67. We know the initial concentration. We want to know what is the Kb. So remember, your Kb is your conjugate acid concentration times your hydroxide concentration divided by your initial base, right? From our generic equation for a weak base dissociation, right? So plug in the things we know. We know that we want to find KB, so it must mean we have all the other things. If you recall back from the previous problem, right, we got our pH from our concentration of hydrogen or hydroxide, right? So we're basically kind of working backwards. So if we have our pH of 9.67, in order to get into OH concentration, right, we need to find the pOH. So we subtract that from 14, and we get that our pOH is 4.33. And then from there, we can get the concentration of hydroxide by doing 10 to the negative pOH. So our hydroxide concentration then would be our 10 to the negative 4.33. And we get 4.68 times 10 to the minus 5. So if you recall back when we did our ice chart, both of these were x, right? So they are equal to each other. So we will plug in our OH for both of these. So we would have 4.68 times 10 to the minus 5 squared, to plug in for both of those, and divided by our initial concentration of our base minus our X, right? Now, 0.1 minus 4.68 times 10 to the minus 5. Remember that means it's point one, two, three, four, four, six, eight, right? So if I do point one minus that, it's really not going to make any difference at all. You can choose to ignore it or leave it. You'll get the same answer either way, right? And so then we can calculate what our KB is. And so then we get 2.2 10 to the minus 8. All right. so you can pause and go ahead and try to practice this problem too. And then you can join me back and we'll go over it. Alright, so again this time we're doing KA. We are told what the pH is, so from that we can get the H concentration right? by doing 10 to the negative pH. So our hydrogen concentration then is 10 to negative 5.66, which is equal to 2.19 times 10 to the minus 6. And so we know our initial concentration of our acid, right? Remember our, our generic dissociation would be our hydrogen ion and our conjugate base. 
right? And so then our Ka is equal to our hydrogen concentration times our S conjugate base concentration over our initial or our acid concentration, right? So Ka <coughs> is equal to this expression. So we plug in what we know. We know our hydrogen concentration, 2.19 times 10 to the minus 6. These two are equal. So we shift their 1 to 1 ratio. So Ka be equal to 2.19 times 10 to the minus 6 times 2.19 times 10 to the minus 6, which is that squared, over our initial concentration, 0 0.012. You can just use 0 0.012. You can also subtract the x, just as it would in the regular expression. But again, that's really not going to affect the value at all. And so then we're going to calculate k. And we get 3.99 times 10 to the minus 10. Right? So we had two significant figures before, so we will round to 2, 4.0 times 10 to the minus 10. And that is finding the Ka or Kb. <coughs> Alright, so in your past I gave you a, on the page behind the schedule, you have a list of Ka values for various um, at weak acids. But of course, they all have a corresponding conjugate base. So we can use Ka values to determine what the Kb for its conjugate base is. So we know that the relationship between Ka and Kb, if we multiply them, gives us Kw. Because of how we calculate Ka and Kb. So if we put them together, you see here we have our weak acid dissociation, and then it's conjugate base with the water, right? And we have our Ka expression, your hydronium ion, your conjugate acid, or sorry, your conjugate base over your acid, and then for Kb, you have your conjugate acid times your hydroxide over your um, original base. Right, so if we added these two equations together, right, we end up with water making hydronium ion and hydroxide ion because your conjugates cancel out, leaving you with your waters and your hydrogen and your hydronium. And we learned previously that to determine that K value, we would multiply these two since we added these two equations together. So K A times K B gives you the K W. And Kw is a known constant, 1 times 10 to the minus 14, which we see at the top of our page here. That is also happens to be where pH plus pOH equals 14, okay, came from because the Kw is 10 to the minus 14. Okay, so when we want to find the Ka or the Kb, we can do so by multiplying. Find Ka times Kb to obtain the Kw. So if we look at this practice problem here, we want to use the following acidity constants to answer questions. So which of these three acids is the weakest? Alright, so again, the weakest acid ha dissociates the least, right? And so we look at these values. This is 10 to the minus 5, this is 10 to the minus 10, this is 10 to the minus 4. But which of those dissociates the least? And one is 10 to the minus 10. So that would be the hydrocyanic acid. And which of the following bases is the strongest? So again, the correlation there is that, that the KBs tell us the same thing, right? But we would need to know those KB values are. So again, to find the KB values, we get KW is equal to KA times KB. So 1 times 10 to the minus 14 would be equal, in this case, to 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5 times Kb. So to find Kb, we would divide. Right? So Kb for the acetate ion, right, we would take 1 times 10 to the minus 14 and divide by 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5, and we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. And then we would do the same thing for each of the other two. Right? And 
So you would take B for your C n minus would be 1 times 10 to the minus 14 divided by 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. And we plug that in and solve. And we get 2.0 times 10 to the minus 5 for that one. And then KB for the formate ion. We find the same way. KW divided by KA. And we get. 5.9 times 10 to the minus 11. And so we can see here that the Ka and the corresponding Kb are basically opposites. Right? So the weakest acid then has the strongest um, conjugate base, which makes sense because if you're not more acidic, then you have more base in it, right? So our cyanide ion is our strongest base. And this is what is the pKa of HCN. Well, p simply means negative log. And you can take the negative log of anything. So the pKa is the negative log of Ka. Right? And so since our Ka for HCN was 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10, we take the negative log of 4.9 times 10 to the minus 10. And we get 9.31. Let us see. And then what is the KB for BC and minus? Well, we just calculated that right here. Right? 2.0 times 10 to the minus 5. And of course, if we want to find the PKB, we can either take the negative log of the KB, or we could just subtract 14 from the KA and get the same answer. Alright, so we'll be practicing this more in class when we meet next.